The whistleblowers, these are the people we need right now. Once your government has become this rotted, this filthy, this corrupt, the only chance we have at fixing it in any way we can is people within it stepping out and being brave. Joining me now, again, we love having him on the show, Kyle Serafin of the Kyle Serafin Show Now, which I'm thrilled about. Kyle, first of all, let's deal with this. Is the whistleblower thing picking up? It, it seems like it's picking up and we're getting more and more of them, and, and that's a good thing, right? It does seem like it's picking up, and uh, it is a good thing if we are. It, it sounds like we're inspiring some folks to, to come forward and and expose what needs to be exposed. Like you said, there's a lot of rot in this government. Sunlight is sort of the best disinfectant to kill off that mold, that grime that's been growing. And uh, it sounds like we're we're seeing more and more whistleblower headlines, which if I don't know them, that's really good news to me because that means more people that I don't even know that are not in my circle are doing the right thing. It's good for them. Good. Well, I'm not going to ask if this person's in your circle. I just don't want to know. I'm better off not knowing. But this new bribery allegation against Joe Biden, what is it? What is an FD-1023? Is that a plane? I didn't explain all this stuff. Yeah, uh, the federal government is, is great with doing bureaucratic things, and the FBI is the best at doing bureaucracy in many ways. So some people are familiar with the form. It's the federal form, FD-302, and that's the interview form. We've seen a lot of these in the, uh, like the Proud Boys trials. So people are starting to learn FBI forms. And in the same way that a 302 is going to immortalize an interview that you do with a subject or a victim or a witness, the 1023 is used for confidential human sources. So often known as CIs or confidential informants. These are uh, sources that the FBI is going to go out and interview and they're going to bring the information back to the bureau. And then it's either going to be analyzed, it's going to be discarded, it's going to be looked at, it's going to generate a you know, a whole new investigation. It may mean nothing. It may just be background noise. And so this uh, this 1023 that we're seeing, uh, at least being bandied about, is going to be this source reporting. And in theory, some source came to the FBI and someone has said this was a problem because the Bureau hasn't done a, a good investigation of it and said that uh, here are the outlines of how the Biden crime family has been operating. They want to know why it wasn't uh, moved forward. And so Chuck Grassley and uh, it sounds like Comer have also, they've, they brought it to the public's attention. So it's setting us up for this interesting fight because this is gonna be the classic sources and methods, uh, you know, defense that the FBI and all the intelligence community loves to do. And yet this seems like it's in the public's interest to know what the heck is going on if this is our sitting president. Uh, can the FBI, it's probably a bad way to ask the question, but can the FBI not comply and not bring it forward? I know they have all kinds of different ways to protect themselves, but a United States senator demanding it is, is quite a thing. Uh, I think it's going to end up in the judiciary. So you've got the executive branch, uh, which is the FBI. You've got the, the legislative branch, which is going to be the Senate. And then I think the judiciary is going to be kind of calling the balls and strikes on this. And I have no doubt that the Bureau will fight this. That's what they do. Um, when you're an intelligence agency, you try to fight transparency. It's just the nature of the beast. So they're going to do the classic, you know, it's an ongoing investigation claim, I expect. They'll say they're protecting their sources and their methods of gathering information. And all those things, we'll see if it, if it plays out. It's like I said, I, I, I tweeted this the other day. I think it's an interesting challenge because there is a significant need for this transparency in the public interest. And so, you know, we're going to have this classic stare off between two different branches of government by probably in the third branch of government. Does the FBI see itself as subservient? I, I, the people within the walls, do they see themselves as working underneath Congress? I don't think so. That, that was never the way it was explained. I think a lot of times the FBI, and they have the mistake of sort of looking at themselves and thinking what we do is good because the institution is good, and therefore what the institution asked me to do must be good. More and more people, and I think that's what this, this influx of whistleblowers must indicate, more and more people are realizing that maybe we're the bad guys here. And maybe this agency, which has done a ton of awful things to people who work for the agency, you know, people are friendly towards guys like me and Stephen Friend. Uh, there's plenty of others whose names you don't know that got thrown out for not doing anything wrong. And then they've been bad mouthed. It's, it's a, a long history in the FBI, but uh, more people are becoming aware of it. I think traditionally uh, FBI agents like to put their head in the ground. They try to stay out of the politics of it. They just want to run down after bad guys. But when the bad guys are, you know, uh, pro-life Catholics and people who otherwise just want to be left alone and are trying to do things that are First Amendment protected, you end up in this really weird space where you start going like, oh, I know my oath was not to the FBI. And I think a lot of people are starting to have to answer that question for themselves.
Let's go back to the details of this form really quickly. It's just, I know it's a small thing, but it, it, it's, it bears asking. Is it normal to take in a form like this and find out about something like this and have it be ignored or have the ball dropped on it? I don't want to assign, I'm all game to assign malfeasance to the FBI, as everyone knows, including you, but I don't want to do it in every single instance. Is it, is it the norm that you would get one of these and maybe it would be misplaced? Maybe you just wouldn't think to pursue it further. Is, is that something that would happen? It's something that could happen and there could be plenty of good reasons for it. We should probably explore like who this whistleblower could be, right? So it could be the person who actually took the document in, who wrote up that report because they would know what's on it. And so it doesn't matter if Chuck Grassley's office has the document or not because you've got the, the individual who wrote it. So that's a possibility. And they could think that it was squashed. If that's the case, then it's probably very credible. It could be someone who was also in that meeting but didn't write the document because generally agents show up two at a time to do these debriefs with sources. And it could have been the supervisor who approved the document um, it could have been an analyst who read it and thought it meant something that it didn't. You never really know when you're dealing with, this is a human intelligence thing. So human beings come with all of the, uh, the sort of the flaws that all humans have. They have motivations. They've got uh, political motivations. They may have financial motivations because the Bureau pays an awful lot of money in, in big cases. So, I mean, they pay them in cash and sometimes up to six figures as we've seen with the kind of Christopher Steele thing. So we don't know how credible this allegation is. <laughs> you enjoy watching that? Would you like some more of me? <laughs> Good. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel. You will enjoy it.